You might recall we've been looking at growth and decay, but we're moving to extension one layer when we said modified growth and decay. The example I gave you was when something is dropping in temperature, but the ambient temperature isn't zero. So therefore, as it decreases and decreases and decreases, it's not going to approach zero, it's going to approach whatever your ambient temperature is. And we call that E for environment. When we looked at temperature, and we looked at when you've got an environment that has some kind of non-zero temperature, uh, we introduced, we actually developed Newton's law of cooling. Do you remember what it was? I'll give you a clue. It starts like this. Do you remember? Okay, first thing, it's cooling, right? So minus, okay. And then what's, yeah? T minus A. No, E is E. Okay, so we're looking at this and we were saying rather than regular, a regular decay situation where it's minus KT, it's dropping in proportion to what your temperature is, we're dropping in proportion to the difference between your temperature and the environment temperature. That's T minus E. Okay? Now this talks about when you're decaying and you're going down to a level that's not zero. But what about situations like this, where you're not decaying, but you're going up towards something, but in a similar way, there's some kind of limit past which you cannot grow any further, okay? Now, populations tend to do this, you know? They grow sort of exponentially to a certain point, but then, well, what kinds of, like, not a rhetorical question, what kinds of things get in the way of a population just growing limitlessly? Okay, number one, resources, okay? Resources are a very broad word. What kinds of resources are we talking about? Number one, food, what else? Shelter, space. space, okay, you need physical space to live, okay? Not only do you start running up against those limitations, but as you hit, like, say, space problems, you get overcrowding, which means that sort of transmission of disease happens faster, right? So all of the plagues of, like, the, the 1000s to 2000s, they all started in cities because of this problem, okay? Uh, and, of course, things like the common flu. So therefore, I want to think about what happens when a population sort of reaches this up limit. It keeps on growing, okay, but it has a cap on it. Now, this is not a technical name. It's just kind of a descriptive name. I want us to think, just like we did before with the Newton's law of cooling, what does this look like visually, and therefore what kind of equation are we going to get? So here comes graph number one. Regular growth. Regular growth. It looks like this. right? We are familiar with this. You're going to have your... Um, your time intercept there, um, sorry, not your time intercept, your population or temperature or whatever intercept. You turn a growth situation into a decay situation by doing what? How do I change this thing? Okay. AE to the minus KT, right? If I go like this, because your time axis is the horizontal one, like so, slapping a minus sign on, on the front of that lower case T flips things horizontally, because that's your horizontal axis. So this is the situation, okay? Now, if I want to think about, like, I want this kind of shape, right? I want it slowing down, but I want it slowing down as I increase, not as I decrease, okay? So if I want something that's going up, but in the same way, like this, right? You can see how I move from two to three. How am I going to change the equation of this situation? Yeah, so just like here, I slapped a minus sign on the front of the T to flip horizontally. Here I'm slapping a minus sign on the front of the, well, on the whole thing. And that flips me vertically, okay? There's one last thing we need to adjust because here you'd expect we're thinking about positive populations. So just like we did with the first modified growth in the case situation, I'm gonna introduce a vertical shift. I wanna go up, okay? So something like this. We really should have some asymptotes on all of these. Okay. So if we have a look at this, we can think about... Fine bit of guitar playing there, I understand. Mr. None of these guys have mentioned anything about that in the last half an hour. So this is news to me. I don't think I need to wait to make sure it's already there. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> See, it's like, you can't count on anyone, can you? It's just, okay. Last time, when we had the decaying temperature, right? I just added a number, right? If we call this like a, your maximum population or something like that, let's suppose that this is uh, population equals, I don't know, let's call it M for maximum, okay? So that's my uh, intercept there. 
how does that change this equation, right? This is this vertically shifted up by m units, right? So the equation of this will be m take away a e to the minus kt. Do you agree? Do you see how I started with growth? I went to decay. I modified this decay situation to turn it upside down so it had this growing idea. And then I just gave it some numbers so that it actually made sense. Okay. So we want to actually have this now. If I think about this equation for P, okay, if P equals M minus, okay, where M is the maximum. What kind of differential equation, what kind of DE will this obey? Well, as usual, all we have to do is just differentiate the thing and find out, right? So I'm looking for a dp dt here, right? What happens to the m? Disappears, it's a constant after all. What's going to happen in here? Minus uh, ka. I'm going to write k. I've got two negatives that are cancelling out, so that's why that's done. I'm going to write a, that's already there, e to the minus kt. Did I account for everything? I've done the inside, done the outside. Now I want to get this back in terms of the original function, p, right? So I'm going to have to do that adding, subtracting thing I did before. If I take out a factor of k, what am I going to put in here? This is just, I'm just taking a factor out. Interestingly, remember how on this line, it's like, oh, I've got a negative and it's cancelled out. But I actually kind of still want that, don't I? Because look, look at this guy. I actually want that negative in there. Do you see that? So if I slap the negative back, it means I bring it back in here. Okay, now what? Added n and subtract n. Do you agree with that? Have a look at that. That's the population, right? Okay, now just compare that. You've got Newton's law of cooling there in your book, right? How different is that to Newton's law of cooling? Not very close. Not very different at all, which shouldn't surprise us because we arrived at Newton's law of cooling by doing much the same thing and doing this shifting around. All that's really different is, like, what are these things here? Temperature rather than a population. Um, a maximum population ceiling that you can't go past as opposed to the environmental temperature. But both of them are doing the same thing. They're both heading towards here. And of course, if the population was equal to m, then you're going to have no change of growth. You've hit the ceiling, that's it. Does that make sense? 